This video explains why and how the Walther CSX GP15-1 Locomotives 3S LiPo system was changed to an IMR lithium-ion 3S350 milliamp hour 10440 battery carried in a trailing battery car. It also notes why this is a better, easier, and safer way to go dead rail in HO scale. Even though the Walther's EMD GP15-1 CSX, powered by a small 3S 300 milliamp hour LiPo, proved to be a technical success and also proved to be the longest running of the two conversions to battery power, I was not satisfied with that conversion. It was not an easy conversion to do. It required a lot of modeling skills and tools. It also required a LiPo charger and the knowledge of safe LiPo charging practices, as well as the safe storage of LiPo batteries. LiPo batteries really should not be left unattended in a locomotive or a battery car. The CXX conversion required extensive modification to the body shell. The inside top of the shell needed mold lines removed to allow the 3S LiPo to lay flat and there was not much room for the chosen and modified power connector. The gray box over the rear truck had to be removed and a washer made from its rear screw holder. It took a lot of time and effort to actually figure out how to get everything to fit inside the body shell and a balsa wood frame had to be constructed over the motor to keep the battery in place. This is just one of five CAD drawings used to learn if the LiPo could be fitted in the locomotive shell. The body shell needed to be modified to allow it to slip on and off without having to remove the coupler assembly. The cutouts can be seen in the photo. While it was relatively simple to lift the shell from the frame to swap batteries, getting it all back together to run again proved a bit fiddly. The wiring also became vulnerable to accidental damage with repeated shell removal. Because of an oops I had with the drive shaft components on the rear truck of the CSX, the same locomotive was purchased with Conrail markings. The same modifications were done to the Conrail as it was to become the LiPo conversion replacement but they were really unnecessary when it was decided to use a battery car instead of fitting a small LiPo in the body shell. Only two modifications would have been required for the Conrail with its battery car. Both modifications can be seen in this photo of the Conrail shell. A portion of the rear right screw holder part of the body shell needed to be removed so that the power leads could feed through the screw hole in the frame. A hole had to be drilled in the shell to allow the power leads to exit the rear toward the battery car. The same modifications were completed on the CSX shell to convert it to use a battery car. Since a gray box had been removed already, I measured it and it looks like the decoder and speaker can be secured to the inside top of the shell without interference from the gray box. Its biggest problem is that the CSX battery conversion used a LiPo, which is probably the least safe lithium ion type battery as it requires a lot of user knowledge of safe handling practices, charging, chargers, dischargers, special voltage meters, and safe storage practices. The most practical conversion to dead rail using Locofy is to use three lithium ion IMR 10440 350 milliamp hour cells in AAA battery boxes in a trailing battery car. The Locofy decoder and speaker were removed and the connector for the LiPo battery removed. The right rear screw portion of the body shell was removed to allow the power leads to pass through the right rear screw hole in the frame. A hole was placed in the rear of the body shell for the power leads to pass out through. 8 inches of red and black 30 AWG wire were threaded through the bottom of the screw hole in the frame, pulled up, 
and then soldered to the red and black power leads of the decoder. The decoder and speaker were secured to the inside top of the body shell and the shell placed on the frame while working the red and black leads out of the screw hole and through the hole in the rear of the shell. It was a bit fiddly, but not too bad with some patience and some tweezers. The video can be paused here to read the data. The boxcar is sitting on the guide I made to find out how long it is and get its recommended NMRA weight. The boxcar shell was carefully removed from the frame using a small flat blade screwdriver. The weight was removed. Some cross molding was removed from the top inside of the frame to allow the battery boxes to set flat. Before sanding the sides of the frame so that the boxcar shell would just slip over it, I tried to remove the trucks and couplers. The trucks could not be removed because they screw into an unsecured pin that goes through the frame to the underside. A little baking soda was applied to the top of the pins with a brush and then thin CA was applied. That stopped a lot of the wobble that the boxcar originally had. The car was tested on the layout by shoving it all around and the secured pin didn't cause any derailment problems, but much of the wobble was gone. The outside of both sides of the frame were sanded and the front and rear corners of the frame rounded until the shell would slip easily on and off the frame. Two other modifications were needed. A slot had to be made in the boxcar's front end for the power leads to pass through. 1 32nd by 1 8 inch strips of balsa wood were added along the molded line seen in the boxcar on both sides to keep the boxcar body shell from slipping down too far and interfering with the trucks. The wings were removed from the battery boxes with no batteries in the battery boxes, to make a series circuit, the front battery box red lead was soldered to the rear box's black lead. The red wire at the front of the rear battery box was clipped off. That red wire was soldered to the rear of the spring of the fourth battery compartment. The battery boxes were secured to the boxcar frame, and the power leads from the CSX locomotive were soldered directly to the leads from the battery boxes. No connectors were used in this installation. They proved to be not as convenient or as practical as I had hoped. The fourth cell was not in position for the photo. That slot in the rear battery box is not in the circuit. A cell is placed into that slot when the train is run to balance the load and keep the weight in the NMRA recommended range. Like the Conrail conversion, there is no switch. Removing a cell breaks the circuit and putting it back in turns the circuit on again. Once the sides of the frame have been sanded correctly, the shell just slips right on and off. The locomotive with its boxcar battery car was run over all of the track sections on the demo layout and showed no problems with any type of derailments. Because of the change from a 3S LiPo to an IMR lithium ion 3S 350mAh 10-440 pack, the locomotive had to be reconfigured in the LocoFi app. The EBL USB chargers were used to charge three cells for the reconfiguration run using seven steps. Using the EBL lithium ion universal chargers is another reason this is a better conversion. They eliminate the complicated learning curve involved with setting up and using a LiPo charger. While waiting for the cells to charge, it occurred to me that I had failed to mention that the ambient temperature affects the capacity, useful runtime, of lithium-based cells. 
Other factors affecting capacity were noted in the Part 5 video. If the layout is indoors, the ambient temperature will usually be close to 20 degrees to 22 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Layouts that are outside in a garage or attic may have ambient temperatures above or below the normal range. That is another reason that actual run times will vary. My basement, where the cells were charged and discharged, stays at about 17 degrees Celsius or about 63 degrees Fahrenheit pretty much year-round. The reconfiguration for the new 3S lithium-ion 350 milliamp hour 10440 battery proved a bit of a surprise. During the original configuration of the CSX with the 3S LiPo, the results of step 7 showed 72 miles per hour for the speed. Remember that speed is determined by the applied voltage. The Conrail, with its gondola battery car, using a 3S lithium-ion 350 mAh 10440 pack showed that the Step 7 speed result was 65 miles per hour. For the reconfigured CSX with the 10440 3S pack in the boxcar, the Step 7 configuration result was 72 miles per hour which was the same as when it was powered by the 3S LiPo. A time voltage procedure was performed and the derived time was 30 minutes. That was the same as the Conrail, so a second timed voltage test was not performed. The batteries were recharged. A prototypical run test was performed on the demo layout for a time 30 minutes as that is what the similarly powered Conrail proved capable of doing during its second prototypical demo layout run. After 30 minutes of prototypical run time, a cell measured 3.675 volts. An hour later, that cell measured 3.705 volts. I also measured the other two cells an hour after they had been used. One was at 3.716 volts and the other was at 3.712 volts. Both locomotives can be run prototypically on the flat demo layout for 30 minutes each. Both of the lithium ion 10440 cell powered locomotives are now running. Okay, they're both running. What that is because I had to straighten that switch out. Okay, here we go. Let's speed up the CSX a little. Speed up the time. Okay, we got both of them running now using the uh, lithium ion 10 440s. They're not running as a consist, they're just running individually. I'm going to stop the CSX we'll stop the Conrail we're going to build a bit okay I'm going to pull up the siding here it's hard to keep the train going through the crossover going back to throw the switch and we'll bring the CSX around. So we got it. Yeah, 
gonna stop it right there. Shut down the CSX. Over here, shut down the Conrail. And that's it. A summary at this point, the end of May 2022. Dead Rail Pros, one, using it can improve reliability and provide smoother overall running. Two, using it can eliminate or at least simplify track wiring. Three, track and wheel cleaning becomes almost a moot point. Four, the frogs with turnouts do not have to be powered for the loco to run smoothly through them. Five, reverse loops do not need special wiring to change polarity. Six, Ys with three diverging routes are not a problem. Seven, there can be no short circuit in the track as it is not powered. Dead rail cons. One, battery charging and maintenance. Two, battery safe handling and storage practices. Three, runtime for long extended operating sessions. Four, a bit of effort is required by the individual to create the dead rail system. Who should consider using dead rail? One, newbies or those who have not heavily invested in the hobby yet. Two, those who only have a somewhat limited locomotive roster size at this time. Three, those whose mindset is not yet latched onto or solidly fixed itself to the current available systems, DC or DCC. Four, those who are really open-minded to alternatives in power and control. Five, those who like a project to keep their minds and hands active. The LocoFi system is one of a few that can be used to go dead rail. The LocoFi system was used because it was available at the time this project was started. It has proved to be very reliable, well thought out, and very user friendly. Plus, the LocoFi team is absolutely top notch in giving assistance and feedback. Using the LocoFi system, an old Android device or a cheap new one, three IMR lithium ion 350 milliamp hour 10 440 batteries, or multiples of three, two EBL USB chargers a couple of AAA battery boxes, a relatively inexpensive DC-powered locomotive and a battery car, a person with a modicum of soldering skill and modeling skills can create a dead rail diesel locomotive with extremely fine Wi-Fi remote control, engine sounds, bell, and horn, both easily and relatively inexpensively. With a slight change in mindset, many more people can enjoy all the benefits of dead rail, HO scale, model railroading. Thinking outside the box can provide indoor bench work that is both durable and sturdy and that does not require a lot of expensive lumber, woodworking skills and tools, or a large vehicle or trailer to transport the materials. The Fast Tracks Bullfrog manual turnout controls are working great for dead rail. They come with a micro switch that can be used for many purposes. They are extremely easy to assemble and install and work very reliably. A list of major items to purchase with links is listed in the description below.